Hey guys, how's it going? Alex Allgood from Broad Productions here, and today I'm going to show you how to export your videos in the proper settings to upload full HD on YouTube. Um, the best quality, ooh, <laughs> I just got an email. I just got an email. If you heard it on my phone, I don't know if my mic picked it up, but I just hit my pop filter, and now my chair's squeaking. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. Um, I promise I do not take part in illegal drugs. Uh, but like I said earlier, in this tutorial, you will learn how to export videos in full HD in the proper format and at the lowest file size. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Here I am in Premiere CS5. Even though it doesn't matter what version you're using, this should translate to all versions of Premiere. I am in a 1080 30 frames per second comp. I uploaded my 1080 footage. One thing that you have to make sure you do is a lot of people think that you can take standard definition um, footage, uh, scale it up to HD, render it out in HD, and somehow or another you have HD footage. Um, no. Just, just the doors over there, just go walk away. But people think that scaling up your footage is good. No, it's doubling your pixels. It's like digital zoom on a camera. It's awful. All it is is increasing pixel size, losing resolution. So, in fact, you're, you're not even gaining a higher quality. You're losing it. Same thing goes with 720 and rendering it out in 1080. So, what I'm trying to say is make sure you're using your footage or make sure you have HD footage if you're going to render it out in HD. Don't even render it out in HD if it's not HD footage. Um, only use this tutorial if you're using 720 or 1080 footage. And make sure if you have 720, you're in a 720 comp. Don't put 720p footage in a 1080 comp and scale it up even that little bit. Put it in the correct font, people. You know, do it right. Don't jiffy whip things, you know. Ugh, jiffy whip. Who? What? What is that? Uh, okay, I'm getting off topic. <laughs> but basically, a simple thing, upload or import the footage, drag it in, did nothing special. So I'm going to assume I'm finished. Go to File, Export. Okay, hold on. You have to have the timeline selected. Uh, my bad. File, Export, Media. All right, wait for that to pop up. Computer is being a little slow today. All right, we're good to go. Um, so I'm not sure what this pops up as default. I think the format pops up as a quick time. Um, so go ahead and go to format and go down to H.264. This will give you the best compression rate to file rate or file size ratio. So click that. And then I already made some presets, which I'll show you how to do later. But we're going to start with some presets and work on them. Um, this goes to where I was saying if you have 720 or 1080 footage. Um, they have some presets down here. I don't know about any CS4 or CS3 for YouTube, standard definition, uh, high definition. I like these, but I like my settings better, which you will too. So determine if you have 1080 or 720 um, and what frame rate you're at. Probably 29.97 or maybe 24 for 1080. But regardless, I'm at 1080 at 29.97. So I'm going to click that. And uh, overall, this preset is rather good. It is at full 1080. There's my frame rate, 29.97. Keep everything the same, aspect ratio, your profile levels, everything all there. Um, bit, your bit rate will stay at a VBR, uh, meaning a variable bit rate. That way you can change these. Um, and, uh, and this basically bit rate is how much data per second in the file. The, the, the higher up you go with the target bit rate, the bigger the file size, but the higher the quality. Bring it down low, worse quality, but uh, very low file size. Um, one thing taking this down too much is if you look, maybe if you have like a dark gray solid that gradients to black, so it's like close colors, when you have a low bit rate, You'll see that pixelated lines because it, it lessens how, many, how much colors are in the final compression codec. So you'll see those like pixelated lines where it's only like a dark gray, a darker gray, an even darker gray than a black. 
not like a full gradient that's like smooth and clear. So, ooh, I just got a text message. Okay, I need to stop with the music. Sorry. Um, so you want to keep this at a normal rate. Um, typically, if you're using a DSLR, which I use, um, I use the Canon 550D T2i Kiss X4. Wherever you're from, whatever it's called, I call it the T2i. Um, it records at 40 megabytes per second, or around there. So that would be our normal bitrate set, but we want to compress it. So for YouTube, if I'm rendering it for high quality for whatever else, it's typically around 25 to 30 uh, megabytes per second. But for YouTube, I typically keep it around 15 because that matches the the uh, the compression on YouTube because there is going to be some compressing onto its streaming flash player. And then, um, so around 15 should be pretty sufficient, still high quality, low file size. Um, maximum bit rate, just keep it at 20, a little bit above the target. And leave everything else the same. Um, Audio-wise, it should be the same if you're in mono. Change that to mono. Um, if you're using a specific frequency, of course, do that. Don't try to upscale your frequency. If you're using, you know, a 44.1, don't put it in 48, assuming that it's somehow going to sound better. Um, keep it in auto quality at high. Um, your uh, your bit rate for your audio. Oh, another text message. Next text message. I can't pronounce it. Um, I typically keep mine normally at around 128 or 192, just depending on what I'm recording on. Um, but this preset's at 160, and it's done me some good stuff. So I'm going to leave all that there. I don't have to worry about the multiplexer flix filters. I pronounce multiplexer right, right, but not filters. Uh, I don't have to worry about the multiplexer filters or FDP. All those are good to go. Um, we'll go ahead and name our file. Um, I was going to think of something creative to say, but I can't think of anything, so... Hello, YouTube! That's what I'm going to call this. Uh, click Save. Of course, save it to wherever you want it to save it. And then, we'll create a preset. Um, you're going to go right here next to the preset thing, and you'll hit the middle button. Or not the middle one. What am I talking about? The uh, left-hand one. Save Preset. Uh, you'll name the, uh, the whatever you want to call it. I just call mine YouTube HD 1080. Um, but I already have mine open, so I don't need to save this. So you are going to click OK, but I am going to click Cancel because we're different. I don't know. Yeah. And then um, you can either click Q or Export. Export will render the program um, through Premiere um, with no preview or anything, or you can click Q, which opens up um, Adobe's, I forgot the name of it, but it's the Q program, rendering program, which is really neat because it gives you all the information in a preview of the render, and you can continue working in Premiere while it's rendering. Compared to if you click export, it just pops up with an export bar, and then you try to do anything and nothing happens. So I typically click Q, it makes me feel better. Click that, render it out, let it do its thing, and you should be good. And, uh, and I forgot to mention, there's also, using the H.264 codec, there is a estimated file size at the bottom, which is really handy because I know YouTube has some limitations on file size. So um, you can always adjust your bitrate under the video tab um, until you reach that desired file size. So keeping it as high as you can, but the file size, you know, accurate for, um, for YouTube. Now... If you're using 720, same exact thing. You're going to click the 720, 29.97, or 24 if you're using a uh, thing, trying to trying to imitate film. Um, at, leave everything the same, but maybe bump up the target bit rate to about 8. Keep 8, 10, good to go. Um, I love the presets in Premiere. They do a great job. If I had to create one myself from scratch, I would probably keep all these settings. Um, again, create a preset right there. Click Q or export, good to go. And from there, you will upload perfectly widescreen, wonderful looking HD videos to YouTube. And not only just to YouTube, but to VMO or I don't know, any other video site. These settings should translate to all of them with very wonderful results. Or even heck, for DVD or Blu ray, they'll look great. Um, 
overall, I always use the H.264 as a compression format. It is just fantastic. And if it was a girl, I would take it on a wonderful date. Um, thank you guys for paying attention to this tutorial. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. And as usual, if this tutorial helped you, please post a video response below. And uh, and uh, let, me, let me see your work. I would love to see it. I love all you guys. Subscribe for more because there always will be more. And I'm going to talk in an intense voice because this is the end of the tutorial and most of you have clicked out. So I can do what I want. I'm creeping myself out. I'm alone in my apartment talking like this to a microphone with no one else. So that's my cue to leave. You guys have a great day.